Jerry Corley here, StandUpComedyClinic.com with another episode of Ask the Joke Doctor. In this episode, we're going to cover a very simple comedic technique called wordplay. One of the advantages we have as comedians is that we know, or we should know, that the audience is very linear. Audiences tend to just accept things at face value, accept them for what they are. And there are words and phrases and expressions. Most people are very busy trying to figure out what you're trying to say. They're trying to communicate. They're trying to listen to what something means in context. And in the meantime, comedians should be looking at alternate meetings, right? The different meanings that they could have. And I think we let so many slip by. Today, we're going to look at a quick clip of Mitch Hedberg. Now, Mitch Hedberg was famous for using wordplay techniques. He would do a technique that you could find in my book, Breaking Comedy's DNA. I don't know if you know this, but I wrote that book, and it actually breaks down the science of why people laugh, the laughter triggers, the, what makes the brain tickle, and the structures and techniques you can use to pull those triggers. So if you're interested in getting better, get that book. It'll change your life. There is a literary device called collocations. It's when we use two or more words to be more descriptive as a phrase that's become so habitually used, it's more than just coincidence, right? It's a habit of using it. For example, uh, if we say dinner roll, or if we say something like, we only use carefully selected prime beef. Carefully selected is a collocation that's been used time and time again, carefully selected. As a comedian, I'm thinking, as opposed to frivolously selected, right? So you can think about taking those phrases and turning them on their head. Let's take a look at Mitch Hedberg at this, this quick idea of where he takes the word king size bed, but he takes it one step further. I got a king size bed. I don't know any kings, but if one came over, I guess he'd be comfortable. <laughs> oh, you're a king, you say. Well, you won't believe what I have in store for you. <laughs> it's to your exact specifications. When I was a boy, I laid in my twin size bed, wonder where my brother was. All right, you see how he did that? King size bed. Again, we think a king size bed, just the size. And he's like, takes it to the literal meaning of king. So this technique is called simple truth. It's like Jim Gaffigan uses the same technique, break something down to, to its most basic steps. What else could it be other than what it is? You can take anything around your house and turn it into a possibility. And you notice how Mitch not only said king size bed, then played it out as a literal king. What if a literal king was here? What would I say? Has the act out? Then he takes it even further with the twin size bed, right? So he does that joke and that joke got an applause break. The reason it gets the applause break because the king size bed is present beforehand and then it builds up to that and the audience is like, oh my God, I never thought about it that way. That's so true. So when it's just a simple term, we've heard every single day, but none of the people in the audience thought about it that way. Comedians, that's our job to think about it for not what it is, what it could be. So go around your house, you'll find certain things that have collocations, right? So you look at this, for example, in my bathroom right there, Trader Joe's lavender chamomile hand soap. So that's my first thing. I was like, hand soap, huh? But then I noticed uh, 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 as well, lavender chamomile. Lavender chamomile? I have that in a tea. I think I have lavender chamomile tea. It's supposed to make me drowsy at night. And it's like, so that made me think, oh, lavender chamomile hand soap. Why would you put lavender and chamomile in hand soap? What's the purpose? What if you accidentally wash your feet with hand soap? with this lavender chamomile hand soap. Well, that would explain why my foot fell asleep. But let's focus on the words hand soap, hand soap. Remember when you, just, you used to just have soap? You know, just use some soap. But now it's gotta be hand soap. It gives a whole implication of what if you make a mistake? What if you accidentally wash another part of your body with hand soap? So what I would do is list everything dealing with hand soap. I could like list the palm, right? Uh, what's on the, the palm, right? So you have the, the hand, then you have fingertips, then you have finger, finger prints, then you have fingernails, then you have thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, uh, pinky, um, a palm reader, uh, back of the hand, back of the, you know, backhand, back of the hand. Then you have uh, metatarsals. Those are the bones in the hand. So you can go through a whole list of things dealing with the hand and how it might relate to hand soap. Then you go opposites. What if I washed another part of my body 
with hand soap. Like one time I, I washed my ass with hand soap. Sucks. Every time I sat on the throne, I'd leave fingerprints. So that could be a joke that comes from uh, the hand soap idea. You could put that in an act out. My dad was always like, hey, don't wash your ass with the hand soap. You might sit on a toilet and leave fingerprints. You know, maybe put it in an act out. It changed the, the dynamic of the, of the particular joke. What else could you wash with hand soap? What if I washed my junk with hand soap? Uh, would it be like doing it with a stranger? Um, you see what I'm saying? There's all kinds of potential in just the simple word hand soap. So consider that as you walk through your day. There's lots of these collocations, dinner rolls, desk chair, laptop. What if you had a you know, laptop? What if you used that somewhere else? What if, you, what if you were using a laptop while sitting on Santa's lap? Would that be too much? Make the, would the computer crash? Um, but you see what I'm saying? You're just walking through and brainstorming all the possibilities with simple collocations. And if you look up collocations on Google, you'll find you know, hundreds of them you could work with. So just consider that. Don't take things for what they are. Look at things for what they could be. Jim Gaffigan uses this technique. Jerry Seinfeld, George Carlin. Um, Stephen Wright was great at it. Mitch Hedberg is definitely great at it. It's one of those things, like if you watch Mitch Hedberg for 15 minutes and you start thinking of things differently, you'll start to look at the world differently. Also, Mitch Hedberg had another thing added to his persona. He was high AF. He had an addiction to heroin, which was really bad. And, um, but it actually, for him, gave him a different look at the world, right? Well, it killed him eventually, but it gave him a different look at the world. You could pretend to be high and you'll start seeing things in a different way. And so, because I don't want you to kill yourself. Now, the other thing, uh, I was just looking around the house at things, same place, right on the countertop in my bathroom, hand sanitizer, hand soap, hand sanitizer. I think a hand sanitizer, I was like, sanitize, clean things up. Like when I was a kid and I'd um, use bad words, my mother used to wash my mouth out with soap. I think it would be more effective if she sanitized. George Carlin used to say, look for the disconnects in words and phrases and, and what people say and what they do. And in this case, we have hand sanitizer with moisturizers and vitamin E. And then down here it says, kills 99.99, kills 99.99% of germs, kills 99.99% of germs. So hand sanitizer with moisturizers and vitamin E kills 99.99% of germs. Isn't there a disconnect there? So you could say something like, wow, you know, you use this hand sanitizer right before your very eyes. You can watch 99.99% of germs just get murdered, but your hands stay soft and supple. Might not be a laugh and fall out of your chair type of joke, but if you presented it in the right way, it's going to get a laugh because the audience is going to be thinking, oh my God, that's so true. I never thought about it that way. Don't let things get away from you. Don't look at them for what they are. Look at them for what they could be.